Yeah, you know, so obviously largely as expected. Uh, you mentioned the story about the peak. I think we're probably right at the peak on headline inflation now, obviously incredibly high right now at 7%. Um, but the core is probably going to move a little bit higher over the next few months. I see the peak probably in March of 2022 on core inflation. And, you know, and then from there, I think we should see, as you mentioned, the base effect starting in April, a steady decline on that growth rate on inflation moving forward. You know, the problem is just that we've had this huge run up uh, to such high levels right now mm -hmm. that we're going to have a lot of wood to chop in the back half of 2022. Um, I do just want to point out that there are a couple things that I think are uh, sort of beneficial in terms of the inflation outlook, in terms of lower inflation moving forward. Uh, the most obvious is on used car prices. I mean, in the spring of 21, we were looking at 9, 10% per month. And more recently, that slowed to around two and a half. Today was three and a half. But the most recent high-frequency data suggests actually the next couple of months will be extremely soft on used car prices. So there is a little bit of sort of silver lining in some of the underlying uh, data that we got today. So then what, what do you make of rents? I mean, it's the biggest single portion of CPI. Um, okay, you're looking at used car prices, but I'm wondering how rents play into this and how that sort of maybe pushes off the peak a little bit. Yeah, so, you know, rents are, are moving pretty steadily, and so is OER right around 0.4, and that's, you know, just 40% of core inflation right there is, is just those two indexes. Um, that's going to be a, a constant source of sort of upside for inflation moving forward. But, you know, just to give you a little bit of quick math here. So right now we're looking at about, you know, 3.2, 3.3% overall year over year in terms of rent growth. Um, let's say that moves up to close to 5% by the end of the year, which I think is, is quite likely. The amount that's going to add to core inflation, that's going to be much, much uh, more than offset by sort of the decline that's expected in used vehicles by the balance of the year. So if you sort of net out the expectation for those two components in particular, you're talking about probably a drag on balance of core inflation of about a full percentage point by the end of the year. So yes, rents are rising. They're catching up to what we've been seeing in the private market rent data for you know six to nine months now. Uh, but the expectation is that we should see the year-over-year -year change in used cars really sort of offset that so that the overall impact net on inflation should actually be a push hit lower. In terms of wages, just give me a sense of, of what is happening there. We saw the earnings data today and, and clearly wages are not keeping up. Does that start to flip? As, as, as headline inflation comes down, do, do, do wages stay higher, and does that negative number become a positive number? I'm just kind of wondering what could, what could change here in terms of the ability for the consumer to keep spending and keep delivering on the demand side of the economy. Yeah, so, I mean, you're exactly right. I mean, let's look at the ECI, which is probably the best measure of wage growth that we have. Um, private wages and salaries, real private wages and salaries, I should say, after netting out inflation, um, are actually falling year over year in most sectors outside of just a couple like leisure and hospitality, for example. So yes, you know, it's inflation is eating away at these wage gains that people are seeing right now. And as you rightly pointed out, as we move on throughout the year, as inflation comes down, we should start to see those real wages pick up. But you know, one thing in terms of the consumer continuing to sort of power power consumption going forward is that they have been shifting away from sectors as you would expect. Uh, where prices have been increasing to other sectors. So, you know, a couple of examples, we've seen real spending on autos decline very, very sharply over the last six months. We've seen real spending on items like, uh, you know, I'm sure you guys have talked a lot about beef prices going up a, a lot over the last year. Beef consumption is down over 12% in the last six months as well. So you are seeing consumers sort of make these decisions to shift away from items that are seeing big price gains. To, to other areas. So net-net, I think consumption should be okay, um, even though real wages right now are, are hurting because people are making those decisions to substitute away from higher price items uh, to cheaper items. Um, Omer, I'm, I'm gonna direct your attention to a chart that we're gonna have here that Guy had brought up uh, earlier in our editorial meeting, and it takes a look at China PPI versus US CPI. And the point is that China PPI is really about the input cost to the world, and that US CPI is really the output cost uh, to the world. And that you've seen uh, China PPI is this blue line here rolling over, definitely uh, at its peak, whereas the CPI hasn't yet hit that, and you forecast for a few months. What is the correlation and the relationship that you notice between these two indicators, and how do we read those tea leaves? 
Uh, so I'll be honest with you, I, I've been looking at this chart for years, and, and I'm just not a big fan of thinking that, you know, the China PPI has a great deal uh, of information for the US CPI. It, it, it definitely correlates much better with, you know, for example, import price data and, and the US PPI, but that flow through into what consumers are paying um, it is actually not that strong. And really, it's just, it's sort of con confined to a couple of items that we import a lot of from China. So. For example, the import share coming from China for uh, apparel and, and um, footwear is incredibly high. So there's some pass through there, but for most of the items that we're importing uh, from China, they really tend to be more intermediate materials for manufacturing. So they don't really play a huge role uh, for the US consumer. So for me, you know, I don't see a lot of uh, sort of downside risk to inflation just because the China PPI is coming down, especially in light of the fact that, you know, Retailers today are paying more for transportation, for example, higher wages and so on. And those are some of the costs that could still make their way into what the consumer pays um, at the store. Uh, I don't think the China PPI really has a lot to do with anything in terms of the final price.